Samsung held their unpacked event this morning and there's lots to go through. We don't have time to dilly dally at all today. Gotta get right to the news cause it's gonna take a while. Time to just jump right in guys. No more delaying because just this do, is- Just do it. <sighs> yeah, okay. Jeez. Samsung's folding phone is called the Samsung Galaxy Fold because it folds. I can tell they ran that through some focus group testing. The front has a 4.6 inch display and a single camera, but, but it opens to reveal a 7.3 inch Infinity Flex display with two cameras contained in an ugly notch in the top corner. Why? Why so big? Anyways, inside is a Qualcomm 7 nanometer octa-core processor with 12 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage and two batteries in each of the segments for 4,380, what a random number, milliamp hours all together. There's also a side mounted fingerprint reader and three rear facing cameras. That's six cameras all together. Good God. The Fold, what a stupid name, supports three app multitasking thanks to its large display and will be available in LTE and 5G versions starting at 1,900. $80 on April 26th. Yeah. A $2,000 phone, and it's not even from Apple. Imagine that. Wow. That's a little excessive. You could buy a badass gaming PC for that price, or two regular phones that you could just hold side by side. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but Samsung didn't stop at the fold. So dumb. It also unveiled the Galaxy S10. All four versions of it? The Galaxy S10e, S10, S10 Plus, and S10 5G. Okay, well at least they didn't mix Roman numerals and crap in there. That's true. The S10e is the smallest with a 5.8 inch screen. The S10 period is 6.1 inches, the S10 Plus is 6.4 inches, and the S10 5G is 6.7 inches. They've got color accurate dynamic OLED displays with Samsung's embedded Infinity O camera cutout design. While the S10e has a side mounted fingerprint reader, the rest have a new ultrasonic fingerprint scanner embedded under the display and wireless power share to charge other mobile devices wirelessly. I can get into this. Yeah. The higher end S10 models support HDR10 plus video playback and recording. And they're the first mobile devices to support Wi-Fi 6. And there's, there's more ends. They've got triple rear cameras with normal telephoto and ultra ride options. Wow. Samsung also revealed the Galaxy Buds. Wireless earbuds with up to six hours of battery life and a cord free wireless charging case. And the Galaxy Watch Active and Galaxy Fit. Both new swim proof wearables. Wow. <laughs> Looks like Samsung really went for it this year. Shotgun approach to launching devices. Now I have to buy a Samsung phone or watch or tablet or something. Don't hey, I? James, you don't have, you don't have to. That's unavoidable. And our last main story for today isn't about Samsung. God, thank you. Apple is reportedly planning on combining apps across iPhone, iPad, and Mac computers. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman claims that Apple is expanding the initiative known as Project Marzipan. <laughs> What? Which would allow developers to create one app that automatically works across iOS and macOS. Apple already created desktop versions of existing iOS apps in macOS Mojave, including home, news, stocks, and voice memos. But Project Marzipan, <laughs> those apps, <laughs> but Project Marzipan apps have native compatibility. Apple is expected to reveal more about the project at its worldwide developers conference this June with widespread availability in 2021. That seems far. Apple has neglected enthusiast Mac users for some time, so maybe linking it to iOS is Apple's way of forcing itself to care about Macs again. Maybe we'll get a new Mac Pro. I hope it doesn't have a notch. The Mac No. And now, Riley has something very important to say. We all, hopefully, have our own everyday grooming routine. Showering, brushing your teeth, shaving, squeegeeing, inspecting various places. Well, no matter what your routine is, Dollar Shave Club has your back with toothpaste, body wash, razors, and a bunch of other awesome stuff you didn't even know they had to help you look, feel, and smell your best. For $5, you can get your starter set from DSC with an executive razor and trial-sized versions of their shave butter, body wash, and one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. For $5? Are you freaking kidding me? And after that, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. So to get your starter set, head to dollarshaveclub.com slash techlinked or click the link below. Wow, thanks Riley. I didn't know that. Now, onto the dick pics. I mean, <laughs> the quick bits. Wait, what? 
Virtual reality headsets are advancing slowly, but Varjo thinks they should advance a little faster in both resolution and price. The Varjo VR1 headset has a central 1080p panel that is surrounded by twin 1440 by 1600 OLED screens that together deliver 63 pixels per inch and apparently up the clarity so drastically it warrants a $6,000 price tag. It's meant for professionals and the enterprise, not the ship, uh, <laughs> but the segment of the market. So don't expect uh, to be entering the matrix anytime soon, gamers, because this is for the Starship Enterprise. Unless you have 6,000 bucks to spare, I guess, then you're good. Then you can do it. Yeah. SoundCloud has announced their premier distribution tool will allow artists to upload music to other paid music services like Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music, and Tidal, and even more than that. That's pretty cool. The service will not take a cut of artists' earnings from those platforms, and artists will keep all the rights to their work. And Logitech is releasing an updated version of their popular MX518 gaming mouse called the GMX518 with a new 16,000 DPI hero sensor and 32-bit ARM processor. It's the perfect mouse! New internals, old ass externals, because change is bad. Facebook has gone and done everyone a solid by adding an option in its Android app to disable location tracking in the background when the app isn't in use. Imagine that. Gee, thanks Facebook. Why was this on by default anyway? What's wrong with you, Facebook? And similarly, EA has opted users out of an option in Origin that shared players' real names on their profile. It was discovered by some disgruntled users last week that the option was turned on by default, meaning everyone's real names were visible. And that's bad if you're an online like me. That should now be fixed, and I feel like someone needs to also go and fix all these tech companies' brains slightly. With a hammer. Wow. Whoa. <sighs> that's it for this episode, chaps. Thanks for watching, and I'll thank you to continue watching on Friday. That's when we'll be back with more tech news, and until then, I say, Adieu. Adieu. <laughs> See, I worked that in. Oh, wow. I did all this. Gesture to rule them all! <laughs>